That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. All right, guys. After talking to a lot of people who like the channel, after talking to a lot of people that I really care about their opinions, I've decided what we are going to be doing with our rookie draft kit this offseason. Now, I know a lot of people want to go out and they want to sell their rookie draft kits for just, say, $60, $70. I think that's kind of ridiculous. I would much prefer not just coming through and charging over $50 for a draft kit. Now, trust me, I'm going to be putting so much work into this to make sure that it is the best draft kit that we can offer. But instead of just trying to charge that, what I'm going to do is for everybody supporting the channel on Patreon, everybody supporting the channel with that mother flocker tier, we are going to be giving you the draft kit completely free. I honestly don't really even want to go through and make separate sales because I am not trying to make as much money as possible. I just want to make sure that I'm providing as much value as possible for all of those people that are supporting the show on Patreon. So yeah, that's what we are going to do. I'm going to continue to try to provide y'all as much value as possible over there on Patreon because you're the one supporting the show. And I have a very exciting announcement that we've actually been able to significantly upgrade our microphone. I just got the new microphone here. Now I am waiting for some other pieces to come in. That way we can get everything set up. But hopefully either tomorrow or the next day, we have that set up where we get a much more professional setup going in here. And that's due to everybody supporting the show on Patreon. So I want to thank all of y'all and the last announcement I need to make is this Friday at 6 p.m. What we are going to be doing is we are going to be live streaming our next Patreon Dynasty startup. Now, no, you cannot get in this startup draft. It's already filled. Now, don't worry. We are still going to be doing so many more startup drafts going in the future. But if you want to come out and try to participate in this one, if you want to make some comments on some picks, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And more importantly, have that notification bell hit that way on Friday when we start our live stream, you'll know, hey, we got to come out here. We got to get going in the general chat. And instead of me giving y'all my opinion, I'm just going to be reading your opinion out loud because I don't want anybody sniping me. But that should be it. Let's get into this video. Let's talk about Terrace Marshall, a wide receiver that has been rising up rookie rankings pretty much all offseason now. Now, no, we have not risen him up our own rankings. I have him currently about in the middle of round two. Now, of course, we are going to get into a little bit more details with this and his exact ranking at the end of the video. But before we get that, I want to go over his overall profile. And of course, the first thing that we have to do is we have to look at the size, the athleticism, the age, and he is going to be 21 years old at the time of the NFL draft, which of course is something you love to see. Now, I don't need to explain this by now because everybody watching the channel understands the importance of having that young age coming into the NFL because if you're already an NFL ready player at 21 years old, we know that you are gonna have a few more years to develop compared to a wide receiver that's possibly coming in as a red shirt senior at 23 years old. So you love to see him check that box. Another box you love to see checked is the fact that he is 6'2", 205 pounds. So maybe a Rondell Moore that's 5'7", maybe someone that is an outlier with their size, you're a little worried about. But here with Terrace Marshall, you don't have to be worried about that in the slightest as he does have that prototypical size. Now, also what he has is he has a fantastic speed profile to go with this. He ran a 4.45 40-yard dash. Now, if you combine this with his size, you actually get an 85th percentile size adjusted speed score. So obviously that's something you like to see. Now, I don't want anybody overvaluing that though. We've said this so many times before, but Athleticism at the wide receiver position does not directly translate over to fantasy football production because we know at the wide receiver position, you get volume, you get targeted by having crisp routes, by generating that separation. And yes, you can do that with speed and having elite speed does help you go and break off those long plays like Tyree Kill, but it's not everything. I mean, you see wide receivers come into the NFL that have average athletic profiles that will sit here and we go, hey, I, I don't care about the 40 yard dash. I don't care that it's not a 90th percentile score. As long as it's above, just say the 40th percentile mark, and he has the production profile to go along with this, then we can get very excited. I mean, the best example we can use of this is just going back to last year's NFL draft, 
where pretty much across the board, everybody had C.D. Lamb as their wide receiver one, including ourselves, because C.D. Lamb had that fantastic pro prospect profile. He had the production, yet if you pull up his NFL Combine numbers, while they're decent, it's not like he's jumping off the page. So please don't just be looking at this 40-yard dash and thinking that it's everything. Also, Terrace Marshall was actually a five-star prospect coming into LSU. Now, generally, we talked about this before, but those high school recruit rankings don't matter a whole lot at the wide receiver position if you just look at direct correlation between what the player was coming out of high school as well as going into the NFL just because we look at that and we go, hey, this is a Donovan Peoples-Jones situation where generally the wide receivers that are going to get that very high high school recruit rank, they aren't even close to where they want to be by the time they get out of college in terms of their pure skill level at the wide receiver position. Usually the guys that are big, the guys that are fast, those are going to be the guys that are the elite high school recruits, which matters a whole lot at the running back position. But at the wide receiver position, it isn't everything except in this case. In this case, I think it is something that's worth bringing up just as a small side piece because Terrace Marshall had a very interesting situation at LSU where in 2018, his true freshman year, he really had no production. Now this obviously for most prospects is going to be a red flag, especially if you go to a program where you should be able to get on the field right away, like a Rashad Bateman going to Minnesota. If he did not have freshman year production, you'd be extremely worried. But here, you actually have the excuse and why Terrace Marshall did not have that freshman year production. Where, yeah, I mean, he averaged 21 rece receiving yards a game as well as 1.3 receptions. But the guys ahead of him were Justin Jefferson and then Steven Sullivan. Steven Sullivan actually was a four-star guy coming out of high school. He was a sophomore in 2018 as well. So no, he himself is not going to be an NFL prospect. But it's at least nice to see that it's also another wide receiver that was a high pedigree guy and that did have an extra year of experience over Terrace Marshall. And of course, Jamar Chase was there. That goes without saying. Now in 2019, this is the season that I want to look at because we know 2019 was the magical year for LSU. You had Joe Burrow, you had Joe Brady, you had Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Clyde edwards alaire and also you had Terrace Marshall. Terrace Marshall with that elite, elite, group of skill positional players surrounding Joe Burrow still was able to be close to an every down player. I mean, he averaged close to four receptions a game, over 55 yards a game. He had 13 total touchdowns in 12 games played. So I know that these numbers don't pop off the page. This isn't the 110 receiving yards a game that you would like to see in an offense this productive, but he was playing alongside Justin Jefferson, who just posted one of the best rookie wide receiver seasons of all time. He was playing alongside Jamar Chase, who should be a top eight NFL pick this season. So you go, hey, he has the reason. It's just like we're talking about with Devontae Smith. If you want to look at that 2019 year and hold it against him, you need to understand some context behind this. You need to look at the players that he was playing alongside, especially when the next season in 2020, when Justin Jefferson goes to the NFL, when Jamar Chase decides to take a year off due to the COVID concerns, in 2020, you have that massive blow-up season from Terrace Marshall. And I want to remind everyone, he's still young during this season. He's still only 20 years old. So he posted 6.8 receptions a game, over 100 receiving yards a game, and he had 10 total touchdowns in only seven games. So obviously, this is the year you want to see. You want to see the fact that he has prototypical size. He has the excuse on why he wasn't able to come through with elite production at a very early age in college. And then when he finally gets the opportunity to play alongside other college players instead of a Justin Jefferson, who's going to be elite in the NFL, and instead of another elite NFL prospect in Jamar Chase, then he dominates targets. He dominates production for this LSU offense. So every box here is checked. You have the age. You have the athletic profile. But most importantly, you have the production and the context that goes along with it. Now, the last thing that we really want to dive into here is we want to dive into where he's probably going to be going in the NFL draft. So if we go over to my favorite site to use at this time of the year, it's actually grinding the mocks. And no, this is an ad by any sort, but I just love the site. And what they do is they take a ton of mock drafts from all over the internet. They pretty much compile them into an ADP. 
and then they tell you where these players are ranking. And no, it's not an exact science. No, you shouldn't just automatically plug these players in with this kind of draft capital. But you can kind of get a feel for the range these wide receivers should be going in. And the range that they have, Terrace Marshall, is actually as the 31st player off the board. The wide receivers right next to him, you have Kadarius Toney right ahead of him and Rashad Bateman directly after. And if we go to this 31st overall pick and we just look, just say seven picks ahead and a few picks behind going, he's probably going to go in this range and look at the potential landing spots and try to determine, hey, what do these landing spots look like? What's going to be an ideal spot? What's going to be the spot we want to avoid? The first team that we have to look at is actually going to be the Tennessee Titans at number 22 overall. Now, if he went to the Titans, I'm going to be honest, I understand that they have that wide receiver two hole open now that Corey Davis is in New York. Still wouldn't love the spot just because we know that A.J. Brown can profile to be a wide receiver, seeing 26, 27% of his team's targets. And if the offense isn't going to be extremely high volume, I don't care what the efficiency is going to look like if you're playing in a low volume offense alongside an alpha wide receiver that's going to have over a 25% team target share. So Tennessee, that would not be an ideal landing spot, but it is something we need to bring up. Then you have the Jets at 23. Now the Jets, let me know what y'all are thinking down in the comment section below because this is where it gets interesting because we can say, hey, there should be targets available because if they take Terrace Marshall here at 23, that indicates that they are planning on slotting him ahead of Denzel Mims on the depth chart because this would be a significantly higher team investment in the 2021 NFL draft at that 23rd overall pick compared to what they spent on Denzel Mims in the second round in 2020. And then you have Jacksonville at 25. And I know that's a team that not many people want to hear about because people want to get excited about DJ Char. People want to get excited about LaVisca Chenault. And they are exciting players. I will give you that. But the thing is, Jacksonville just has so many picks in this year's NFL draft. And I bet you if Urban Meyer really believes in Terrace Marshall, he is going to be looking to bring him in because they have Trevor Lawrence. They want to make sure that they have their wide receiver one to go along with this. Just think about T. Higgins being drafted at the very top of the second round with Joe Burrow last year, despite them having A.J. Green, despite them having Tyler Boyd, which were both wide receivers that people were excited about coming into the season. Then at 26, you have Cleveland, and I know Cleveland looks like it's a crowded wide receiver room right now with both Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. But if you look at the contracts for both wide receivers, neither guy looks like they are slotted to be in Cleveland for the long term. So I know if he landed at 26 with Cleveland, people would have to bump him down. But for the long term, I think that would actually be a great landing spot, assuming that they move on from one or possibly both Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. Now at 27, possibly the worst landing spot out of this group is going to be the Baltimore Ravens. And this is simply just because the volume won't be there. So we can get excited about a wide receiver like a Devin DuVernay that costs nothing, that has the upside to be a wide receiver too. But... You don't want to see them take a high-profile guy that's going to cost a significant amount of dynasty at that 27th pick just because it's going to be a low-volume offense and the efficiency shouldn't necessarily be sky-high with Lamar Jackson. Then at 29, you have Green Bay, obviously a fantastic spot, kind of a little bit different than Tennessee just because, yes, you have that wide receiver that's going to be taking the 25 to 28% team target share, but... What you have on one side is you actually have an offense that's probably going to be willing to throw the ball in the Green Bay Packers. And then at 30, you have the Buffalo Bills, also fantastic landing spot. Yes, they have Stephon Diggs, but we've seen before they're willing to let Josh Allen air it out 45 times a game. And Josh Allen looks like an elite quarterback at this point. Then at 31, you had Kansas City. Kansas City, that would be a fantastic spot for Terrace Marshall. You can make the argument for him jumping up to overall the number three spot. Then Jacksonville at 33 again, the Jets at 34, and Miami at 36. Miami is going to be an interesting spot because we don't know what they're going to be doing with that sixth overall pick. We don't know if they're going Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, or whatever they're thinking in that range. But yeah, I think the best spots that we could see, obviously Kansas City, Buffalo, Green Bay, Cleveland as a sneaky spot, and Jets I think would be a spot that would be a very volatile based on the targets that would be available. Now, please guys, go down there. Let me know what y'all are thinking about these landing spots. And right now, for our rookie rankings that you can find over there on Patreon, we actually have Terrace Marshall ranked directly after both Rashad Bateman and Elijah Moore. Now, I understand that 
Most rankings are going to agree with me in having Rashad Bateman over Terrace Marshall, although they are neck and neck for me. Literally, I can see myself changing this next week if I just sit on it a little bit more. But the case with Elijah Moore, I, I know that most people are going to disagree. Most people want Terrace Marshall over Elijah Moore. It's just going to be almost impossible for me to move off that ranking. I love Elijah Moore so much with the production profile that he has and the type of wide receiver you see on the field. Now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Of course, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. And yeah, that should be it. I will see y'all with the video tomorrow.